The third topic related to implicit differentiation that we're going to cover is finding horizontal and vertical tangent lines. Horizontal tangent lines occur when dy over dx, or the derivative, is equal to 0 over a number. Vertical tangent lines occur when the derivative produces a number over 0. The steps for finding horizontal and vertical tangent lines for an implicit equation is first to find the derivative of y with respect to x, so find dy over dx. The second step is to set the numerator or denominator equal to 0. So if we were looking for where the horizontal tangent lines occur, we'd set the numerator equal to 0. And vertical tangent lines, we'd set the denominator equal to 0. And then step three would be to create and solve the system of equations, which one of the equations would be the equation that you got in step two, and the other one is the original equation. And then step four is just to verify that the point does lie on the curve and that the tangent line is horizontal or vertical at that point. Before we start the first example, there's one quick thing that I want to address. In this video, we're going to be working a lot with putting things in the calculator and putting things squared and cubed and cube rooting and square rooting and doing things like that. And you just have to be really, really careful with this calculator because if you type in something like negative three squared without protecting it with parentheses, it's going to give you negative nine, when in reality, you know that's not true. What the calculator is doing is interpreting it as the negative sign is out front and it's saying like negative three squared, so negative nine. So if you do use that, just make sure that you do negative three parentheses squared, and that will give you the correct answer. Alternatively, if you see negative three squared, you can just punch in three squared because that's the same thing. You know it's going to be positive. Consider the curve given by x cubed plus xy equals 6. Find the coordinates of all points on the curve at which the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. So here I'm looking for horizontal tangent lines. The first step is to find dy dx. So I'm just going to go through that quickly. If you don't know how to find dy dx of an equation like this, please go watch my second video on implicit differentiation before attempting this. So down here, I have found dy dx, or I found y prime. The next step is to set either the numerator or the denominator equal to 0. Because I'm looking for the horizontal tangent lines, I'm going to set the numerator equal to 0. Negative y minus 3x squared needs to equal 0. My third step is to create a system of equations. So one of the equations is this equation that I got from step 2, and the other equation is my original equation. My other equation is x cubed plus xy is equal to 6. And now I need to do some algebraic manipulation to solve this equation because the solution to this system of equations is going to give me the points where the tangent line is horizontal. So I think the method I'm going to use to solve this system is going to be substitution. I'm going to isolate y in this first equation and say y is equal to negative 3x squared. Then I can plug this value for y into the second equation. So I'll have x cubed plus x times negative 3x squared is equal to 6. My solution is that x is equal to the cube root of negative 3. Now to get the y coordinate of my point, I will take this x value and plug it back into one of the original equations. So I'll say negative y minus 3 cube root of negative 3 squared is equal to 0. And then I just need to solve for y. And this one is going to be a little bit tricky to put in my calculator. What I'm going to have to do is first I'm going to do negative 3 squared, which I know is going to be positive. So I'll just do 3 squared. So that negative 3 squared is equal to 9. And then I will take the cube root of 9. So you can't do cube root on this calculator. So what you're going to have to do is, is do 9 to the power of 1 third. That's a cube root. And then I will multiply that by negative 3. So this means, whoops, and I forgot to write equals y over here because I moved the y to the other side of the equation. This means that y is equal to negative 6.240. And that's rounding to three decimal places. Since my y coordinate is in decimal form, I'm also going to put my x coordinate in decimal form, um, taking negative 3 and raising it to the power of 1 third. That is negative 1.442. So now I know that my point is negative 1.442 comma negative 6.240. The last step is just to verify that the point does lie on the curve and that the tangent line is horizontal in this case at that point. So first I'm going to verify that it lies on the curve. I'm going to plug this in for x and this in for y and make sure that it works with this equation. Now I've verified that the point does lie on the curve. And now I need to verify that the line tangent to the graph is horizontal at that point. So I've already found the derivative up here. So what I'm going to do is simply take dy dx at this point and make sure that it winds up being horizontal. And 
And for the number on, on top, I'm getting 0 0.001908, and I'm just going to attribute that to rounding error. Um, so my top number is 0, and my denominator is negative 1.442. This does match the criteria for a horizontal tangent line because dy dx is zero over a number, zero over a number. So that works. And this is my point at which the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. Consider the curve given by this equation. Find the coordinates of the two points on the curve at which the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. The first step, as always, is to find the derivative of the equation. And I've already done that because the focus of this video is not finding derivatives using implicit differentiation, it's applying your knowledge. If you want to pause the video here and take a look at my work, feel free. The next step is to set the numerator equal to zero because at that point, the tangent line will be horizontal. And now we make our system of equations. So this is one of our equations in the system and the other equation is this because the criteria for our point is that it must make a horizontal tangent line and it must lie on the curve. Now I need to do some algebraic manipulation and solve my system. I'm going to solve this by substitution. So I think I'm going to solve for y up here. And I get that y is equal to 2 ninths x. Now I'm going to plug that value for y into this equation. And now I just need to do some algebraic manipulation and solve for what x is going to be equal to. Now I have that x squared equals 81. So a common mistake would be to say x equals nine and only nine. But in reality, when we take the square root of both sides, what we're doing is we're saying that x can be equal to positive or negative nine. So we're likely gonna have two points. And it, it says up here, two points on the curve. So we already know that. There's gonna be one point where it's nine something, and then another point where it's gonna be negative nine something. So now we need to find what is that something? What's the y coordinate when x is equal to positive nine? To find that, I will plug in positive 9 for x into the top equation. In that situation, y needs to equal 2. So one of our points will be 9, 2. And then for the other point, I will plug in negative 9 for x into the top equation. In that situation, y needs to equal negative 2. So these are my two points at which the tangent line to the curve is horizontal. I do need to check both of these. I need to make sure that both of these points lie on the curve and that the tangent line at both of these points is indeed a horizontal tangent line. So I'm gonna do my checking up here. I'm going to check that both of these points lie on the curve. Looks like that first point does lie on the curve and now I will check the second point. And my second point also lies on the curve. So now I've checked that both of them lie on the curve, and now I just need to make sure that both of them are going to produce a horizontal tangent line. I'm going to do that checking over here. So first, I will take dy of dx at the point 9, 2, and see what that is. And I have my dy dx right up here. And now I will check dy dx at negative 9, negative 2. It looks like both of these are going to produce horizontal tangent lines because the numerator is zero. So this is the correct answer. Consider the curve given by this equation. Find the coordinates of the points on the curve at which the tangent line is vertical. So here I'm looking for a vertical tangent line. As always, my first step is to find dy dx, which I've already done here. And now I need to set my, my denominator equal to zero. So three y squared minus three is going to be equal to zero. Because when the denominator is equal to zero, that means that you have a vertical tangent line. That's one of my equations in my system, and the other one is going to be my original equation. I can see that in this first system for my system of equations, I have 3y squared minus 3 needs to equal zero, which means that 3y squared equals 3, y squared equals 1, take the square root of both sides, and you get y is equal to plus or minus 1. So I've already found some of my information without even doing substitution or elimination to solve this system. To find the x-coordinate, I'm going to plug in positive 1 into this second equation. And now I get that x squared needs to be equal to 6. This means that x can either equal positive rad 6 or negative rad 6. So two of my coordinates, since I was plugging in positive 1 for this example, it'll be rad 6, positive 1 or negative rad six, positive one. Those are two of my potential coordinates, and I will check those later. Now I'm going to try to get x coordinates for the y coordinate negative one. So I'm going to repeat this process, plugging negative one into this equation. 
And this time I get that x squared needs to equal two, which means that x can either equal positive or negative rad two. So for my y coordinate of negative one, my x coordinate can either be positive rad two or negative rad two. And my y coordinate will be negative one. So I've gotten four points here. Now I'm going to check each and every one of these points to make sure that A, that they lie on the curve and that B, they do produce a vertical tangent line. I've checked my first point. It lies on the curve and it produces a vertical tangent line. Now I'll check my second point. I've checked my second point and it lies on the curve and produces a vertical tangent line. Now I will check my third and fourth points. And my third point's good and now I'm just gonna check my very last point. And my fourth point is also good. So that means that all of these points are locations that lie on the curve and that they produce a vertical tangent line. And you might be wondering, well, how can there possibly be four points where there's a vertical tangent line? What this graph likely looks like is it is probably an omega shape. So it looks something like that. And then there's a vertical tangent line here. There's a vertical tangent line here. There's one here and there's one here. So that's how we get four vertical tangent lines. Find all points on the graph where the slope of the tangent line is three fourths. So in this case, we're not looking for a horizontal or vertical tangent line, but we are looking for a tangent line of three fourths, but we are gonna follow largely the same process. Our first step is to take the derivative of this implicit equation. And I'm getting that dy over dx is equal to negative x over y. So this is the slope of the tangent line. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So what we need to do is set negative x over y equal to three fourths. And then this is just going to be one equation in our system of equations. The other equation is going to be our original one. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 169. And then we need to solve this system. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to isolate x in this equation by multiplying both sides by negative y. So x is going to be equal to negative 3 fourths y. And now I'm going to plug in negative 3 fourths y for x into this equation. And now I get 9 16 y squared plus y squared is equal to 169. So this is really equal to 9 16 y squared plus 16 16 y squared is equal to 169. And then I can combine these two terms. And now I will get out my calculator. I will do 169 times 16 and then divide it by 25. And that appears to be 108.16. So y needs to be equal to plus or minus square root of 108.16. And let's just see if that's a nice number. It is, it's 10.4. So y needs to be equal to plus or minus 10.4. At this point, I can then go plug this in to one of my original equations and get what x is going to be equal to. So I know that one of my points is gonna have a y coordinate of 10.4 and the other one is gonna have a y coordinate of negative 10.4. I'm going to do the positive one first. I'm going to plug positive 10.4 in for y. This would make x negative 7.8. And then if I plug in negative 10.4, I will get negative x over negative 10.4 equals 3 fourths. And then solve that. And x is equal to positive 7.8. So these are my two points where the slope of the tangent line is 3 fourths. And then I'm just gonna double check that both of these points lie on the line and that both of these points produce a tangent line of 3 fourths. First, I'm going to check that both of them actually lie on this graph. So I'm gonna do that right up here. And both of these do lie on the graph because I got two true equations. Now I'm going to verify that the derivative at each of these values is 3 fourths and the slope of the tangent line is 3 fourths at those values. So I will find dy dx at negative 7.8 comma 10.4, and then plug that into my derivative equation. And that is equal to 0.75 or 3 fourths. And then I will check the derivative or dy dx at 7.8 comma negative 10.4. And that is negative 7.8 over negative 10.4, which is also 0.75. So both of these points lie on the graph and have a tangent line with slope of 3 fourths. Consider the curve given by the following equation. Show that there are no real number points x, y for which the line tangent to the curve is vertical. 
So in this case, it's like it's asking us to find the vertical tangent lines, but it's saying show that there are none. So we're gonna follow the same process here. First step is to take the derivative of this equation using implicit differentiation. Now that I've found the derivative, I know that dy dx is 8 plus y over 2y minus x. Since we're talking about vertical tangent lines, that means that we need to set the denominator 2y minus x equal to 0. So we need to say 2y minus x equals 0. That's one of our equations. And the other equation is going to be y squared equals 8 plus xy, which is our original equation, because we need to make sure that our points lie on that curve. Now we're going to attempt to solve the equation. So I'm going to use substitution. I know that x is equal to 2y. And now I'm going to substitute in 2y everywhere that I see an x in this equation. And then I get y squared equals 8 plus 2y squared. Take 2y squared away from both sides, and you get negative y squared is equal to 8, or y squared is equal to negative 8. And then if you try to take the square root of both sides, you run into a problem, because you would get y is equal to the square root of negative 8. This is not a real number, because you can't take the square root of a negative. So now I'm going to do my explanation that says that there are no points for which the line tangent to the graph is vertical, and then I'll explain. There are no real number points, x, y, for which the tangent line is vertical because the system 2y minus x equals 0 and y squared equals 8 plus x, y has no real number solution. 